Okay, folks, we're back. Um, full disclosure, I worked on this a little bit, not trying to hide things from you, just uh, enjoying the process and I got kind of sucked into it. Uh, I did take some time with my white vinyl eraser, really using those corners to sneak in and clean up any ghost lines, All right? Kind of getting a nice precise point there. And then I did take my kneaded eraser and really, not scrub, but gently brush the surface, kind of like you're wiping off a table, but fairly gentle. I don't want to scrub my paper or lose some of its texture and potentially tear if I'm too violent. All right, so I have it nice and clean, and then I'm gonna get started on my shading. So for this part, I might want some darker values, and it's okay to take a test piece of paper and experiment to get a sense of what these do. I'm finding that this brand is a little bit um, waxier than I'm used to, so it goes a little lighter. So I would probably normally start with like an HB, but I might bump all the way up to my 2B for now. Okay, um, this part I'm probably just going to speed ahead and pause here and there to give some information. Um, but before I do that, you just kind of have to pick a spot, so wherever you're inspired to go. One place that I see on my still life that's interesting is the shadow falling across the second book. So since it caught my attention, I'm going to go ahead and go in and just kind of lay in that shadow. And I'd like you to notice how I'm pointing my pencil at the line that I need to have the most control at. I don't want to go over the line like that. So I point my pencil and that allows me to have a little bit more control. Oops. And of course I wasn't paying attention. So I went into the apple a little bit. Not the end of the world. And it kind of curves, the shadow curves, because the spine of that book curves. And yes, I went over the apple so I can clean it up. Fine now when there's nothing in my apple. Once I've shaded my apple, I can't go in and erase quite as easily. So I'll have to pay more attention. All right, I do want to make sure that these shadows are dark, dark, dark. If you remember our core shadows, they're kind of darkest where they begin. This book and this apple have created a little cavern. So I want to make sure I get that nice and dark. You are welcome to use your blending stump if you're feeling like that's the move for you. Um, I might use the blending stump on the apple because it's smoother. I probably won't use it a ton on the books because I want the books to have that kind of linen texture um, of the fabric that's covering them. So I might use it as a base layer and then go back over it with my pencil to give it that linen feeling. All right, I'm gonna dive in and uh, I'll speed this up so you can see my moves. If I have anything worthwhile saying, I'll pause and uh, tell you. All right. I do want to point out that you should be mindful of putting your hand on um, onto your drawing. There are oils in your hand that will cause your drawing to smear. So it's a good idea to have a piece of paper nearby, like printer paper or even a piece of um, newsprint, and use that to shield your drawing from the oils in your hand. I'm trying to recreate that linen-y feeling. So I'm trying to make my marks fairly uniform. And for that reason, I'm letting them go off of the paper, excuse me, off the edge of that book. Since there's nothing in the background, I can erase it 
but I've got smoother marks on smoother areas and I'm going to let this one stay a little rough to look like the texture of that book. The other thing I can do if I want to um, not draw over something like I already shaded that edge is you can line up a paper. And sometimes it works better than others, but I can let my marks go over onto that paper and protect what was underneath. 